Hello, everyone. Uh, before uh, I get on to the session, can you guys please confirm if you can hear me properly? You can use the chat box to let me know if you can hear me properly. All right, I can see Shailendra is there, Naveen Singh is there. Okay, so, all right, great. Um, perfect, perfect. All right, so so this is great. So I'll then get on to the session. And like you know, this session is about solving some higher level questions in permutation combinations. Um, so I'll, I will definitely get into those kind of questions and solve. And um, before that, can you guys, you, I mean, in a sentence, not make it too long, in a sentence, can you guys tell me what are your main pain points in terms of uh, this particular area, permutation combination? Once you are solving, when you try to solve questions from permutation combination, what are the main pain points you guys face? So if I get, can get few answers on that. I see some people are still joining in. So yeah, so I will get into the session. And meanwhile, those who are here, you can definitely drop your pain points in this particular area. Don't make it too big. I mean, too large a sentence. Just in a sentence or two, you can, if you can tell me. I don't see any response till I mean, yet. Okay. When we have you have a team arrangement like a couple tennis match or something like that. Okay, good. I I hear something. Okay. Which one? It should be permutation or combinations, right? So that is that is there. These are definitely the basic question. Uh, the question is simple. I'm asking uh, who is it? It's Rupan. So the question I'm uh, I ask that do you have any specific pain point in terms of permutation combination? Okay. So you can just use it one sentence or two. Just let me know what are your pain points. Okay. So I am going into the a little bit higher level question in this session. So we are getting into that. But these pain points will definitely, I mean, all the questions, the way we solve, it will definitely touch upon all these pain points you guys are mentioning, most of them. Okay. So Rupan, if you have any particular pain points, like a couple of them, I can see one is uh, when to use permutation, when to use combination, and then one is uh, a specific question related to teams and all. Peers, married couples, okay, right when there are multiple group need to be formed. Okay. So that's, that's good. Okay. So the sessions we are, I'm, I have selected few questions, not too many questions, but these pain points you already mentioned right now, most of them, I believe through those questions we are going to touch. Okay. So I will now get into the sessions. And if you, any of you have any, um, if you say someone has written, sometimes we do multiple counting. So if I, do this this is one comment you can see sometimes when we count multiple same items we divide and i get confused about that so we are going to basically talk about all those things okay so let me then start with this session okay just a second okay so i am shubhankar uh you already i mean um gmat club already introduced me so i take care of the quant product so team lean in quant in gmat with and I'm going to run through this session. 
take you through these sessions. We are basically going to go through some high level questions. And like most of you said, how do I identify should I do permutation or combination or not? How do I identify that I have, I have been doing some um, multiple counting? And if I'm doing some multiple counting, how should I make it correct? By what I should divide and all those stuff. So I, I'm going to touch upon all these things in today's sessions. Okay. But since this is a session where we are going to discuss some higher level question, I will set the expectation clear that what I, um, I believe you should know before you see these sessions. Okay. Now what I expect that you should know what are permutation combinations. Understand I'm not saying that you should know the entire thing about when to use permutation, when to use combination. If you know the entire thing, you are not coming to these sessions, right? I understand that. But then you should know what is permutation, what is combination, how to use those formula and all those things. Okay. I will give little idea about that in latter part. Uh, so just hold on. Uh, next thing, we definitely expect that you should know when to add, when to multiply. Like we have, we add when we have something called or. This is a golden rule you can uh, think about. And then when we multiply, we multiply when we have something called and. Okay, so while going doing this uh, questions also, I will touch upon this filling space method. Filling space method is basically something to do with and. So I select first thing and I select second thing and I select third thing and this filling space method comes. Okay, so my idea is that you have some idea about permutation combination, not too much. That's fine, but some idea about permutation combination. Okay, uh, but still to be on the uh, same page, let me just give you some idea in terms of what do I mean by permutation. So the generally permutation is represented something like this in PR. Okay. So in PR is basically in factorial by you obviously I believe you know this, this into R factorial, right? This is the formula I have for in PR. Okay. Now in the same time, what is the formula I know for in CR? in CR is in factorial by in minus R factorial. This is something I have for in CR. So you can see here, there is a relation between these two. Now, what is the relation? You see, in this particular term, okay, or in this particular term, in these two, this term, this term, are they are exactly same. Okay, then what is the difference? Difference is this R square, R factorial rather, right? So I can say if I simply multiply R factorial here, I am going to get something like this, isn't it? Right? Uh, sorry, my bad. Just a minute. Uh, I made small error here, which is NCR, NPR, my bad. So it should be NCR is this and NPR is that. Okay. Uh, let me correct it. Yeah. So, yeah. So this. So now when I multiply this, I get into the NPR thing. Okay. Now, what does that mean? It means in case of NPR, I am doing some selection as well as I'm doing some arrangement. So although we learned something about that in permutation, we do arrangement. It's not only arrangement in permutation. If I talk about in permutation, then I do selection and I do arrangement both. Okay. But in combination, I just do arrangement. That's it. Okay. But on one good thing is that, um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my bad. I was just writing in terms of that. So don't worry. Don't worry about that. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, so, uh, um, so what I was saying here is that uh, in most of the questions, we're not going to use this formula, but in certain questions, it may be needed that I use this formula. Okay. But most of the question we are going to go in lo logically. We are not going to go using formula unless we absolutely need it. Okay. All right. So yeah, I get it. There is some confusion about NCR, NPR. I wrote it NPR, my bad, uh, in the first case. So uh, no, no. All right. So kind of I'm moving to the next question then. Uh, 
uh, with this particular understanding. And then obviously I told you that I expect you to know what is and and or thing, the difference between and and or. And if you know all of this, that is fine. Going to this particular session, that is fine. Okay. So I'm moving to the next part. So what we are going to cover, we are basically going to cover these few things. Um, a very common question we see from student uh, is that student asks, I have solved this question in this way, then what is the mistake in my approach? So why my approach is wrong? Okay. So this is a very common question asked in permutation combination. Okay. Now, so we are going to tackle that particular thing. And like you say, when to use what method, when to use permutation, when to use combinations and all those stuff, we are going to answer this thing. And we are going to answer what if I'm doing double counting? How do I avoid double counting? How do I find out that I'm doing double counting? Okay. So these are the things um, we are going to target. Okay. So let me give you a warm up question. Okay. So take a minute and uh, once you are done with solving these questions, uh, let me know your answer. Okay. So I am uh, going off screen. You, uh, you can tell me um, what is your answer. I will definitely come back and then try to answer your queries if you have any. Okay. Okay, I have started to get some answers. I'll wait for maybe 20 more seconds. All right, guys, uh, 10 more seconds. Okay, cool. So I think I have got fair few answers and a uh, good thing is that most of it you are saying C, which is correct. Okay. And that's it. Definitely. This is not a very difficult question. This is a very simple question. That's why I said it's a warm up question. I will come to the next question. I'll tell you why I have given this question. Okay. So this is a word. So first, if I get a question like this, that there are eight letter words created using the letter. So I can see there are eight letters. All I need to do first thing first is that, is there any repetition? So I see A is there, C is there, H is there, I is there, E is there twice, right? Then V is there, E is there, I already counted, and D. So if I count total, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters present, but one of them, that is um, A, C, H, I, E, V, D, right? Okay, so I have eight letters, one of them counted twice. E is there twice. So how do I solve? You must be knowing that if I have all the eight distinct, I do eight factorial, which is coming from something like filling space method. But since I have repetition, I divide it by two factorial. So I do eight factorial by two factorial and I get to the answer. I just got that only one answer is wrong. So uh, I believe that you now understand why it was, I mean, uh, why you got it wrong. It will not be seven factorial because I can use E twice. I need to use E twice rather, right? So it's not like I'm using seven letter words where all the letters are distinct. That is a separate question. So I didn't ask that. I just asked, there are eight letters. You arrange them in different way and you find out your answer. So you do eight factorial by two factorial. A very simple question. So I'm not uh, giving much time to it anymore. I'm going to my next question, which is very much similar to that. But the question is now a little different. Okay. So can you try this question and let me know your answer?
All right, I started to get some answers. I started to get some answers here. I'll give uh, 30 more seconds. It's a difficult question. I mean, compared to obviously compared to the previous one, you should always, re I mean, you should already realize that. Twenty more seconds. Yes, Mike, I will get into that. I will get into that. This is a 700 plus question, definitely. Uh, now I started to get different answer. Initially, I got four answers as C. Now I have got a couple of answers as D. One answer as E as well. So I have a varied answers, mostly C. If I see four out of seven answers, then I got three D. Actually, four out of eight now. All right. And then one E. Okay. So that's a that's a quite a basically people are choosing in between C and D. Okay. So let me now get into the question. This particular question. How do I solve this question? Okay. Now, um, all right, you guys can write down your answer. That's fine. But I'm just taking mostly the divide, the answer, the divide is between C and D, right? So these are the two options. And I expected something like that, that that will be the, um, where the people will falter. So one of them is correct. Let me get into which one. Okay. So we start with the same thing. Uh, as you can see, this question is Just a second. Yeah. So as you can see, this particular question I'm talking about. Someone written, you have to do two cases, all the different cases. Okay, fine. Good, good. So what we need to do in this kind of question, if understand the previous question there, they have asked me in the previous question, eight letter words. So I could have directly do something like that. Not much a problem. Okay. But now I'm not doing this. Question now changed to only four letter words. So whenever, understand this, you can take as a rule, whenever there is a repetition, which is there. So first thing is I'm waiting for repetition. Is repetition there? Yes. And am I using some of the letters? If I use all the letters, then the previous question. But am I using small of some of the letters? Yes. So these are the two checkpoints. Is there repetition? Yes, there is a repetition. Am I using some of the letters and not all? Yes, I'm using some of the letters. In this scenario, I should definitely find out cases or find out scenarios. Okay. And now I'm going to tell you about how do I find out those scenarios? Okay. Now let's get into the scenario. What do I mean by the scenario? Think about it. If I have the letters A, C, H, I, then I have E, which is obviously, like I told you, is two eyes. And what else is there? Uh, v and D. Okay. Now, there could be numbers where I can get all the letters which are distinct. Or I can get four letter words where there is a repetition present. Okay. So understand what I'm trying to say. I can get one kind, one particular type where all the letters are distinct. Something like, I'm just giving you a random example. Say this where I have, I do not have any repetition. And second scenario can come where I definitely have a repetition. Now think about this question. If this question has a repetition, that repetition must be coming from E, right? So I'm talking about the numbers where both the E's are present along with two other letters. Now those two other letters can be A and C. It can be V and D or A and D or anything. I will get into that. But broad idea is that there are two kinds of words that are forming one word where there is a repetition and one type of word there is no repetition do you understand till this part now i will once you confirm i will get into the uh, solution how do i calculate these parts so you understand the checkpoint so we we told you that 
we are going to tackle when to use this. So when to use that particular thing is here. When do I use it? If repetition is there and some of the letters are used. Okay. And these are the two scenarios. So what we are going to do, we are find out, finding out different scenarios. And based on the scenarios, we are going to do the calculation. So say scenario one. Okay. So I'm talking about scenario one when I'm saying all of them are different. Okay. So when I say X, Y, W, Z. So I'm just taking a random to place or maybe say I'm using letters say for that matter. Say I'm saying something like this. All are distinct. I'm trying to denote it in this way. All are distinct. Okay. So Michael is asking, wouldn't a GMAT clarify if the letters of the Lord are repeated or not? No, this kind of question they will not do because you understand in this particular question, they are giving me a word achieved. Okay. Since they have Since they have given you the word achieved, the understanding here is that here is that you will use this letter itself. So once you are using this letter, it means it is already given to you that you have two E's to use. Okay. So when they give you a word, you can use only the letter present here. If there is any repetition, you can use it twice. If there is no repetition, you cannot use. So can I use A twice? No. Can I use E twice? Yes. Does that make sense? They have specified you the word because of that. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll come to the scenario one. Now see scenario one is simple because in scenario one, I will not use any repetition. Since I'm not using any repetition, I have only these letters. I need not to worry about double E. So I have only these letters. So I will directly get into I will directly get into filling space method because I have seven letter present. Since I have seven letter present, first place can be filled in six way and second space in six ways. Sorry, seven ways, six ways. Then third one is five ways. And then I have four ways, right? Okay. These are the position, by the way. Don't confuse it with numbers. I'm just putting, putting these are the, the position. First letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter. Okay. So I have seven distinct letters so i'm putting seven six five four so if i multiply you can quickly multiply this is 42 this is 20 so i get 840 and there is a high chance that those of you who who have uh, math 840 as the answer possibly you have just calculated this scenario and you haven't calculated the scenario two what is the scenario two the scenario two is when there is a repetition and that is the part where basically student will falter how do i calculate that one so i will now get into that scenario two. Okay. So in scenario two, what should I do? If I get a scenario two, when understand I am using a, a number, I'm just using the number for the representation purpose. Okay. So I'm getting something like one, one, two, three, right? In any order. So I'm getting two same and three, uh, two different, two distinct, right? Now understand if I'm getting two same, definitely they must be E and E because they are the only letters which are repetitive. So E and E done. What about two and three? What about those distinct letters? Now think since I have already selected E, can I say these couple, these couple of letters must come from this, 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 or this. So I have six distinct digits remaining with me. And out of them, I need to choose which two I will take here to form the letters from the words. So I can do that in six C two ways. So understand here, we cannot use filling space method because repetition is there. So do not use filling space method if there is a repetition. Okay. So what should I do? I should use this kind of cases. I should use the combination to get to the correct answer. Okay. Again, I'm repeating this part scenario two. What I did E and E must be there because it is repetition and remaining two, I'm getting it from any number from 62. So what is 62? I'll calculate what is 62. So if you know it to calculate quickly, you can do that. Six factorial by four factorial into two factorial. So if I quickly calculate this particular thing, I will end up getting 15, right? Yeah. 
six into five by two. Yeah, right. Uh, yes, we will arrange. Now we are getting into arrangement. No, the, here we just selected. Uh, okay, so I think knight, white knight. Okay, so you said uh, we have just selected. Now we'll get into the arrangement. But first thing you understand, I have selected a group. Okay, so this particular group I can select in 15 ways. What are these 15 ways? Both the E's are present and two out of A, C, H, I, B, D are present. Two out of those six are present. Okay, that I can do in 15 ways. But this is only we have done selection. We need to now arrange as well, right? Because we are forming letters. So forming letter means we can arrange them to form a different letter. Okay, now how do I arrange? Think about it. Suppose I have got a scenario like this, E, E, A, C. How do I arrange it? In how many ways I can arrange it? Isn't it the same question what I asked in the previous question that eight letters are there? There are two repetition. In how many ways you can do it? Eight factorial by two factorial. So can I say it for this particular thing also, it also remain exactly in same way. So it is basically four factorial if I consider all distinct, but since all of them are not distinct, two of them repeat it. So I can say four factorial by two factorial, which is 12 ways to arrange them. So this 15 is to select them. These 12 is to arrange them. If I take product of it, I get 12 into 15, which is 180 ways to select and arrange. Okay. That's why I told you, remember, first thing I told you that in permutation, when we arrange, we have to also select and arrange. Here, using filling space method will lead to a wrong answer because there is a repetition. So what should I do if there is a repetition? We form scenarios. Like someone already said, I think WW, I mean, um, the user ID, you already said you have to find out two cases, one with different letters, one with two of the same letter. So exactly that's what we're doing here. We're finding out the same scenarios. Once we find out the scenarios, we are simply adding those scenarios. So either you will get scenario one, which is basically leading you to 840 numbers and scenario two will lead to 180 numbers. So when you add 840 and 180, you get your D as the answer. Right. I believe that should give you an idea that if I get repetition and if some of the letters are, I need to select, this is how I need to form scenarios and solve it. So if you can confirm, can I move to the next question? If any of you have any doubt, you can definitely ask. I'll try to uh, try to answer that one. Uh, so in 10 seconds, I'm moving to the next question. If you have any doubt, you can definitely ask. So I'm just moving to the next question. In case any doubt, do let me know. All right. So this is the, this is this question. So, all right. So let's do one thing. Try to answer this question. Okay. A very simple one looks like, right? So you try to answer this question. One minute, two minutes, roughly around one and a half, two minutes. Okay. Then I'll tell you, uh, if you get it correct, well and good, but there is a small chance that there could be here and there mistake here and there. Okay. So I'll try to cater to that. Okay. So I'm just going, I mean, I'm taking myself off the camera so you can just answer.
All right, I got a couple of answers, three answers. All right, I will wait for. So I can see there are a couple of answers. Some people said B, some people said C. Okay. All right. So, so like similar to the previous question here also, I can see there is this split between two answer choices, B and C. None of you are answering anything else. All right. So I give 10 more seconds. It's not a very difficult one. Okay, 10 more seconds and then I get into solving this question. All right. Now you see in this particular question, it says there are four people. So I'm say representing them as C, D, E, and F. Okay. They are playing a game that requires two teams of two members each. So basically they are forming two teams. Okay. So one team will have two members, the other two people will get into the other teams. Okay. So in how many ways can they form the team? Okay. All right. Now, let us not solve this question in terms of using permutation combination. Let us just find out in how many ways we can do that with brute force. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm just finding out all the teams. Okay. So say I'm forming a team, which is one team one, and I'm solving, I'm forming another team, team B. Okay. So I can solve say C and D here. If I put C and D, E and F comes here. If I put C and E here, I can get D and if here, and if I put C and F here, I can get D and E here. Now understand, should I put D and E again here? Because if I put D and E here from the first team, then you can see I will get C and F in the second team, right? But this count I have already counted in the scenario three, right? So do you see that scenario three? which is CF and DE is identical to DE and CF because I'm not going to differentiate the team in terms of team A or team B. I'm not going to differentiate. I'm just forming two teams. So I don't really know which team is named what or something. We are not going to differentiate between the teams, right? Since I'm not going to differentiate. So if I select CF in one team, these automatically getting selected. So if I just use the brute force, can I say these are the only three ways I can form a team, right? Now, most of you who said C, possibly you have done something like this. I have selected two people out of four, which is in four C two ways. And then out of the remaining two, I'm forming another team like this, okay? So four C two, if you calculate, it will be six and this will be one now this particular scenario will have a double counting. Now, why this is having double counting, I'll get into that. But first, can you guys confirm that you understand that there is a double counting happening because of this particular case that when I select CD, I automatically select EF. So I need not to e select EF again. If you can quickly confirm that you understand there is a double counting happening, I will let you know how to identify that. Right? So there is a double counting happening. Now, why this double counting happens? First, we need to understand why this double counting happens. Then only we'll be able to understand that how to tackle this. Okay. Now, the double counting happens, understand, double counting happens when you are forming teams with identical numbers. Okay, so what do I mean by identical numbers? You are forming teams of two person here, two people here, and you are forming another two people here. In those scenario, if the teams have identical number, okay, so if teams have identical numbers in that scenario, exactly two and two in this particular scenario, we will have some double counting, multiple counting rather to be very, I mean, very precise. It will be multiple counting if I do it like this. Okay. Then how should I correct it? Okay. So now let me come to the, uh, not a brute force way, more sophisticated way. How do I correct it? Okay. 
So once you see there are four people available to you, you form a team of two person, two people, four C2. Remaining two people, another two C2. Now you ask yourself a question. Okay. So now you ask yourself a question. Are the teams, these two teams have identical numbers? Yes, they have identical numbers, right? Since they have the identical numbers, understand, since they have the identical numbers, ask yourself how many teams you are forming with identical numbers. Can I say you are forming two teams with identical numbers? Since you are forming two teams with identical numbers, you divide it by two factorial. Understand these two is coming from how many teams with identical number. Okay, so there are two teams, so I'll divide it by two factorial. And if you do that, you will see that you are getting your answer. This will be six into two divided by two. Sorry, six into one divided by two, which will be three. And that is your correct answer. B. Okay, now, so in team formation, when I tend to make a mistake, when there are teams are I form with identical numbers. Like you remember the question where you get a lot of confusion on the questions where some teams of teams are formed related to some mixed double games or something. The double counting happens because identical teams are forming over there. So I need to be very cautious in those kind of questions. Okay. So does that make sense that, so what is the trigger point? Are you forming identical teams with, in terms of numbers? Yes. Then there is a chance there will be multiple counting. If you simply form a team like 4C2 into 2C2 guys. Okay. I'll solve one more question on the similar thing, but in a different, um, I mean, not exact same setup, different setup, but we'll solve another question on that. Okay. So a very simple question, right? If I read this question, no one will say this is a 700 level question. Actually, it's not a 700 level question to be very frank, but this is a very important concept that one should know. So I could see that half of the split was there. Half of you knew this one, which is great. And half of you were not sure about that. So now you should know about it. Okay. And if you know how to identify, this is the logic I told you. Okay. So should I move to the next question? I'll wait for 10 seconds to see if you write anything or else I'll move to the next question. In fact, I need to make an announcement. So I'll get into that announcement. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what we have done in our course in the permutation new, so we have launched our quant 2.0. So we have tried to answer the queries, these pain points mostly whenever we have something like advanced. So the basic part basically deals with, you can see the first part of it. What is that? We have a diagnostic quiz. Then we have and and or rules, digit and letters, all those um, pretty common type of question. And then we went to like special scenarios where you do multiple counting and all those stuff, right? So we tried to break it in part so that it is easier for students to grasp. Okay. So the way I tell you, our idea is basically based on those three things. Student asked why I am wrong. So we are trying to answer that one. Why an a particular approach is wrong. And then second, when to use what approach and how to avoid double counting. Okay, so if we don't have, I, if we don't have, okay, I'll just um, come to that. I'll just come to that question. That is pretty easy. I'll just make a question, previous question. I'll just to tweak it a bit and that will answer your question. Okay, so I can see one question. Can you give an example where we don't have identical teams? So the team numbers are identi not identical. Those scenarios, it's pretty simple. You can simply do 4C3 into 4C1. Suppose there are two teams of three and one. So those, there will not be a scenario of multiple counting. I'll still go to that previous question and give it. Uh, so let me just finish this part. So this is what we tried to do that answer these questions. And most of the things basically revolve around these three things, these three philosophies. Okay. And um, so like, you know, this now Esther is there. So those of you who are like most of the people find that PNC is a pain point. So those of you who are at the final stage of your preparation, you can definitely go for, if you want to boost your score or something like that, you can definitely go for like this two months course and see this new, whatever um, additions we have done to our previous course. 
okay so modification some things we have done okay so if you want to explore that definitely you can try that and those who are starting at your preparations and you want to explore definitely the other options will be great for you like four months or six months whatever those people who are initial phase okay so these are the couple of things i if you have any query you can definitely ask regarding that i will share a couple of links with you as well um so just to come back to this particular question so instead of this so i'm just trying to answer a question where you are no longer so understand this is a separate question you are no longer forming a team of two and two you are forming a team of three people and one people basically you are parting them three and one in those scenarios you can simply do 4c3 into remaining one person is there 1c1 so there is no problem in those scenarios if they are you are not forming any identical teams you need not to worry about multiple counting okay multiple counting will come only when you are forming identical teams for this kind of questions i'm talking about where we are selecting some teams and all those stuff okay so actually it will become much easier if i don't have any identical teams number of in terms of number of people okay all right so i'm moving to um one more questions question on this okay just a minute uh this is the question okay can you try this particular question i hope you guys are trying it i haven't seen any answers yet but that's fine i will give another minute okay i got one answer yeah i got one answer couple okay so i have a pretty valid answer this time So I can see E as an option. I can see D as an option. A, B, C. Okay. So I have actually I have seen. I mean, all the options are mostly there. No, A is not there. Someone changed the answer. All right. Okay. I'll give thirty more seconds. Can't see the options. Okay. I think. Uh, okay. Just let me go off.
I believe you should be able to uh, see the options now. I just yes. Can you can uh, confirm you can see the options now because I can see it. I just remove. I mean, it was there on the right hand corner. I just kept it in the middle. So if you can just confirm. Oh, perfect, perfect. All right. So I'll give 10 more seconds, guys. Okay. All right. So I'm getting into the explanation now. Okay. So as you can see, the question asked, is uh, what is the number of what is the number of ways in which a team of four people can be formed? So they said four people. So I can take any of the people amongst there are six married couples. So if I say six married couples, let me just uh, take it a simple way. So suppose it is one couple is we term it as A. So it is A male partner say, and then A female in that way we are doing B M B A or something like that. Okay. So we go with till f okay so we have 12 people available to us right and then we form teams of four and in how many ways we can do that that no couples can be part of the team so basically both of them we cannot select both the husband and wife or the both the partner of the couple we cannot select both of them right so that's the question okay. now the um, very common answer that we see in this question is e okay um so let me first tell you what what happens when you get someone gets the answer as E. Okay, and what is the approach basically? Okay. Now, if I see a question like that, generally we tend to think, okay, since there is a restriction, so what I'll do, I'll first select. Um, so it's like I can select any 12 person. So that's the idea first thing, right? Okay, so I can select any one out of these 12 people okay now once we have done that understand once we have done that particular thing 12c1 now i cannot select the partner which is correct we cannot select the partner now right so if we cannot select the partner definitely now i'm left with only 10 people so i'm talking about the other five couple so now i'll do 10c1 right now let me get into the next part. So I have selected two people. So basically two couples are now out of my calculation. So I have four couples, which is eight people. So I do eight C one and similarly, I'll do six C one. And this, if I multiply, I most likely I'm getting into this answer, right? 120 into 48. Yes. I'm getting into this particular answer. Now this is wrong. This particular approach is wrong. So I'll get into why this particular approach is wrong. Okay. All right. Now what ha actually happens in this kind of question, when you arrange them in this way, like 12C1, 10C1, you are not only selecting, you are kind of arranging them as well. Okay. So if you arrange them, obviously there will be a chance of multiple counting and which is what is happening here. Okay. Now let me take a smaller example. Understand I'm just giving you a smaller example so that you can see it. That's what mistake is happening here. So I'm just taking a smaller example just to make you understand what is wrong with this approach. Okay. No, the answer is not E. The answer is not E. This is incorrect. Okay. So I'm, so I'm taking a miniature question of this. Okay. So the question now I change it. I change it to something like this. Say there are only three couples. Okay. So AM, then AF, then BM, then BF and cm and then cm and i say i form a team of only two people okay so two person i i select two people now suppose if i select two people understand this if i select two people can i say going by this approach which is obviously wrong going by this approach i can do it in 61 
into 4C1 ways because 6C1 is to select the first person. And once I select the first person, then I will select the next person out of the other two couples. So I have four available people. 4C1, 24. Now this is a wrong answer. Why so? Let me tell you why so. Okay. So what happens? Suppose I selected AM first. In this calculation, I have selected AM. And in this calculation, I cannot select A. Suppose I'm selecting CF. So this is one my one of my calculation that I have selected AM and CF. What if in this calculation I have I select CF and in this second when I select the second person I go and select AM. So am I not counting AM and CF twice? Do you understand that that AM and CF this counting is coming twice because my first counting come when I select AM and then CF and my second counting comes when I select CF first and then AM. But my mathematics, when I do 6C1 into 4C1, I'm selecting all the possibilities. I'm not putting any restriction to it, right? So that's why we are counting all these scenarios multiple times. Okay. Okay. So just let me know whether you have understood this miniature problem that we are kind of doing a multiple counting here. Okay, so if you can confirm, then I'll tell you what, how should I correct it? Can I get a response that you have? Okay, so you, if you have doubt, I'll just. Can you ask the doubt then, Mike? Okay, all right, all right, okay, all right. Let me just write it down then. Okay. So what happens? I'm trying to select it. Okay. So I'm trying to select it. And I, I know my selection is 6C1 and 4C1. Which is wrong, by the way. This is wrong approach. Okay. So I'm trying to answer first why approach is wrong. And then I'll get to the correct one. So when I select 6C1, there is a one scenario will be there when I'll select AM, right? I'll select AM because I can select any six. So I will select AM, I'll select AF, I'll select BM, BF, CM, CF, all of them I'll select. So one of the scenario definitely will be there where I select AM and then at the second go, I select CF. This will be one of the possibilities, right? That I select these two. Now think about it. Not only this, I will definitely have another possibility where first I select CF and then I select AM. So this selection of two and this selection of two are identical. That's the same team, AM and CF I'm forming. Okay. But they are counted twice. So I am doing multiple counting here. Right. Now makes sense that AM and CF, if I use 6C1 into 4C1, there are twice I'm counting them. Okay. So how should I then remove it? Now, it's also, it's not difficult. Understand, since you have selected AM and CF, and like I told you, you actually, what you have done, uh, done here is that you have arranged them. So how many ways you can arrange CF and AM? Obviously, you can arrange them. Can I say if I have two people, CF and AM, CF and AM, I definitely arrange them in two factorial ways. Since you can arrange them in two factorial ways, understand this, since you can arrange them in two factorial ways, so you are doing two factorial number of multiple times counting is happening. So what you should do to correct it directly without using any method, you can simply divide it by that number two, 24 divided by two factorial and you get your answer, which is 12, which is the correct answer here. Okay. So why I divided by two factorial because AM and CF, two people are selected. They can arrange them, them uh, arrange among themselves twice, two factorial ways. So I'm doing every counting is basically getting multiplied by a factor of two factorial because whatever their arrangement is getting into my calculation. Okay. Let me explain this thing with the previous actual question. So you understand there is a multiple counting happening here, right? Can you tell me if you have selected four people? So how many ways you can arrange them? You have selected four people in how many ways you can arrange them? You have selected four people in the original question, right? So you have selected four people and you can arrange them in how many ways? 
four factorial right so understand in this calculation everything got multiplied by four factorial so you just simply need to divide it by four factorial ways this is one of the correction you can do in this kind of question okay however this is bit complicated so i'll talk about another method so don't rush okay don't worry about it i'll talk about another method which will be much easier to comprehend this one what i'm saying if you are making a mistake of double counting we need to correct how do i make a mistake of double counting in this kind of question when we are selecting we basically if i multiply 10c 12c1 10c1 and 8c1 all of them are identical you remember the previous question i said 1 1 1 i'm selecting one person one person one person so there will be a multiple counting the previous question the logic i told you that there will be a multiple counting now how many times i'm multiplying everything how many people you are selecting how many groups you are making understand here basically one group has four people so all the four people are basically getting arranged since all the four people are getting arranged so every counting is getting multiplied by four factorial so if i divide my answer by four factorial i'm going to get my answer okay so quickly do that 12 into 10 into 8 into 6 divided by 24 this this 2 so i get 240 so this 240 is my answer for this question. Okay. I'll give you another approach for this question. So don't worry. I'm giving you another approach. I'll give you another approach. But before that, can you please confirm? Can I can I move to my next approach? Which will be much easier in that way? Because in this approach, I understand we are we are first calculating and then we are dividing by four factorial. But I told you the logic. Okay. Okay. So uh, there is one question. I will take that question. But before that, I'm going to answer uh, the second. I'm just going to give you the second method, which will be much easier. And I would prefer that you guys understand and go into that method. So why should I do double counting and make it complicated? Okay. I should stick to the logic here. Okay. So let me give you what should I do for this particular question if it comes to me. Okay. Understand now. Now I'm just trying to give you a logic. Okay. So there are six couple, couple avail available to you. You cannot select two partners from a couple. So can I say, however way you form the team, four different couple will have contribution in it. What I mean, yes, correct. I, I got a question. I'll just answer that. Great face. Yeah. So you said what you have said is correct. Since I have four people and they can arrange themselves in four factorial ways, that's why I'm dividing it by four factorial. Understand previous question, I did not divide it by the small question, miniature question I gave you. I did not divide 24 by 2. I divided it by two factorial, although they are same, but I kept it two factorial because it is important for us to understand more than two. The logically it is two factorial. And it's luckily happened to be that two factorial and two are same. But ideally, it's two factorial. Okay. So um, the question I was saying. So in if I have four people here, four uh, people I'm selecting, and I cannot select um, two partners from the same couple. Obviously, there will be four different com I mean contribution from four different couples. So if I name the couple as A, B, C, D, E, F, the I way I give, I can always say four people will come from four different, four person will come from, four people will come from four different couples. So four individuals are coming from four different couples. So my question, first question is which four couples, right? So if I say which four couples, can I say to select four couples out of six couples, I can do that in six, C, four ways. So I can select four couples out of six couples in this way. So this is the first thing I have done. What I have done, I have selected the couple from which I will take the make the team. So I have selected four couples. Does that make sense? I'll give 10 seconds and then I'll move to the next part. So the first part is selecting couples. So by this, I am selecting which four couple will be there in this particular team when I say couple the contribution from those couples right all right now 
and then since i have selected one couple each couple will give me two possibilities either i take one partner partner one or i take partner two so can i say first couple there will be two possibilities second couple there will be two possibilities third couple there will be two possibilities fourth couple there will be two possibilities so i simply do what i select which are the couple who are going into the team contribution wise and in how many ways i can take one member from any couple so first couple there are two ways you can say it like 2c2 2c1 that is also fine it will not change i went by choice but then you can go with 2c1 so if you calculate this you will get 15 here 64 is 15 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 is 16 15 into 16 is 240 okay so there are multiple ways to get into permutation combination and get the correct answer but we need to be very sure what we should do okay generally we prefer this particular thing and in our course also we try to give you this idea that how you can think about it okay so whenever understand whenever you are forming a team or something it's always better that you go in this combination route rather than this particular route where you select and then count rather than this route because this route will have multiple counting and then you come back and divide it by some number so you are putting a lot of effort to understand what is happening conceptually so this is i would say for someone who has a very good idea of the concept can go through it okay but if i'm preparing and i'm not very sure about it i'll definitely stick to this so that my logic is sound so the logic is i have four people i'll select four couple from each couple i'll take two people so there is not much thinking you are doing in terms of am i doing double counting no you are not doing any double counting you are selecting four couples so there will no way there will be a uh, um, kind of intercept between the couples four distinct couples you are choosing in 64 ways and after that you are selecting one person from each couple so two into two into two into two right so I believe this question gives you a much, uh, so when you guys were talking about teams and all, although not exactly a forming team, but it is very much on that line. Okay, forming thing is just one step ahead that I need to take care of few more things perhaps. Okay, in those questions, or maybe it may become easier as well. Six factorial by four factorial, two, two, two. Um, Okay, I see one answer. I also got a couple of queries. I'll try to answer those queries. Okay, uh, by the time, if you do not have any doubt, I'll move to the next question and I'll try to, you can check it. I'll try to the answer the previous, previous queries to the guys who have posted, okay? Okay, so there are a couple of questions where people asked, how do I go it about that, okay? understand in those scenarios there are a lot of scenarios will happen so alert you say something uh, ww you say something that can i do it in that way that way it will make complex it will be complex because what you are doing you are selecting four people okay once once you do 12 c4 this is already like you are making a lot of counting where there will be a combinations Uh, just a minute. I'm just okay. Mike is saying, let me just go through the queries. Huh? I see quite a few queries. Okay, you guys. Uh, meanwhile, the others who are fine, you can try this question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll tell you the people who are saying uh, first. I'm trying to answer the people who are saying why cannot we subtract understand if you want to subtract there will be multiple cases let me give you the idea how complex it will become so what you are doing you are selecting four people uh i'm i'm trying to answer the previous question okay so you are selecting four people which you are doing in 12c4 ways fine okay now what kind of multiple counting will be there here multiple counting will be there that a m a f is selected b m b f is selected this kind of this this will be a one kind of multiple counting there will be another multiple counting, which will be this and then something different, say CM or CF, whatever. Okay. So when both the couples are common, when one couple is common, right, those kind of multiple counting will come and then my answer will become complex here. Okay. 
so this is something root we shouldn't go about it for any kind of permutation combination question we will always suggest if you get answer total count minus one something one is wrong only one type of mistake is there you subtract that and get to the answer no issues but if there are multiple types don't do that if there are multiple types don't do that because if there are multiple types there will be highly likely that once you subtract it you may have to add few more things this is a bit of concept about set okay that i subtract the commonality so there will be maybe a possibility that i need to add something back which will make it very complex to understand okay so i will always say if there is one if you are absolutely clear that this is my total count and this is my wrong count one way subtract that's fine but here multiple ways you can get it wrong so don't do that since you are you will have to subtract a lot of things so don't do that okay uh, is it something like we cannot do no we can we can do those kind of things we have to dig deep into it to solve those kind of question in that way but we need to be very cautious and that will make uh, things very complex okay and uh, there is another type of question why do we multiply by 2 factorial 2 to the power 4 uh mike your question answer is that from each couple when i select a couple say the couple is uh i select a b c d just selecting the first couple doesn't mean you are done you can select the, which member you are selecting that can be done in two ways no that you can select whether you are selecting partner 1 or you are selecting partner 2 so since you have two ways selecting partner 1 or partner 2 you for each couple there are two choices you have similarly second couple also you have two choices since you have two choices whether you are selecting first partner second partner for all of them so for each of them you multiply them 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 so that basically gives you that 2 to the power 4 okay uh, does that answer your query now is it like we cannot do by minus we can do by minus but it will make things complex now alak you asked a question how many ways we can do it that four people such that they are couple here there is a there are two things here whether only one of them couple or only two of them couple i mean i mean both of i mean like there are two couples present like a a f f this kind of thing i mean a a b b or is it a a and two different so you can see when you answer the question in this way you are kind of increasing the number of scenarios one scenario will be when both of them are there you can do it it's not like you cannot do it okay you can select which of those two couple 62 ways okay but what will happen once you get into the second part right once you get into the second part there are one couple is selected so you will do 61 that couple and the other couple so basically you are solving another question that from the remaining five couples i am selecting two people such that they are not coming from the first couple so are you not solving a similar question just to answer this question because you are selecting basically out of five people you are selecting one couple in two people in such a way that they are not part of a couple so basically this is very much similar to the question we are solving so why should i make it this complex it's not like we cannot do the way you have done we need to be a bit cautious but we can do it in that way like i told you few minutes back permutation combination we can do multiple ways so the way you are saying as long as my logic is solid we can do that no issues okay uh, so i gave a lot of time to this question i'll give 30 more seconds and then i'll get to this question
all right i see i see few answers uh, let me just recheck okay okay i i i see quite a few answers uh 15 more seconds okay all right so i'm getting into this solution okay um do you guys need more time uh, can you just if anyone needs more time because i was discussing some other questions so maybe some of you were concentrating on that i'll right, i'll just i'll just give 15 more seconds this is by the way very typical type of question you if you have solved og you must have seen something like similar to that okay or maybe in i mean in any course or maybe in gmat club also you have seen similar question right okay so we are basically just going through this question because it's a very common type of question so we just want that you understand how we go about solving this kind of question and what are the constant i need to take care when i solve this one okay so let me get into the solution then so the question says in how many ways can three boys and four girls be seated in a row such that no two boys are sitting together now so there is a problem that the boys should not sit together okay so these three boys say let me name them at b1 b2 b3 they should not sit together so if they shouldn't sit together so it means my idea is very clear here from this understanding that i need to place girls over here right so if i place the girls here uh, can i place should i place only one girl or can i place multiple girls understand if i pay, place them like this or something like g4 g5 so basically i'm trying to give you one way that is fine but why that i can put g3 here as well right okay so i can put the girls in this way so not as not a not a big deal okay i can put multiple girls as well in between boys okay so what should i do in this kind of question then okay now so here in this kind of question understand those people who are creating issues like the boys are creating issues here place them little later okay first you arrange the girls okay they do not have any issues among sitting the uh, alongside themselves so arrange them so like i told you if the girls are g1 g2 g3 and g4 then in how many ways i can arrange them now that's a easy question you can arrange them four factorial ways now what are those four factorial ways i need not to write all of them four factorial is 24 but let me just write one of the way okay so that i get into the next part okay so if one of the way is there now understand where i can place those boys understand i cannot place both the boys here that will be a problem i mean two boys here i cannot do that however what i can do i can put a boy here i can put the another boy here i can put another boy here right so i can put these boys in these gaps okay only one of them i cannot put multiple boys i can put only one boy in any of these gaps right so can i put a boy here yes that's a gap because if i put only one boy here that is not going to sit alongside another boy so that's fine okay so this is one place i have this is another place i have this is another place i have this is another place and this is another place so ultimately what i have for the boys i get five places okay so for the girls i let them sit the way they want to so that is four factorial ways i count them obviously i count all the possibilities because g1 g2 g3 g4 is different from this arrangement right so i need to definitely find out all the possible arrangement which i can do in 24 ways once i'm done with that i know there are five kind of boxes five kind of vacant places created for the boys so understand in this scenario since it is about i am placing the boys there are two ways either you do 5p3 but we can do it using um filling space method as well okay that thing also works here so just take the first boy how many ways you can put the first boy how many places you have for the first boy five places so understand here we are doing little different okay we are not we are not filling the space here rather we are assigning the boy to a particular place okay understand there is a difference subtle difference it's not exactly filling space method because i'm not filling this space what i'm doing i'm assigning the boy 
to a particular place. So think about that. First boy, that is B1, can be assigned in five places, right? And there are another boy which can come in four places because if I say first boy comes here, then the second boy can come in the two, three, four, or five place. These are the places available to him, right? So I have five into four into three. Now, this is something you can do which is kind of similar to filling space method, but this is not exactly filling space method. I'll reiterate that thing because we are not filling the space. We are kind of, it's an extension you can say of that. But I hope logically it makes sense to you that there are five places and there are five chairs available. First person can select any of those chairs, right? It's kind of in that way that I'm arranging, I'm putting the people, I'm asking the people to sit on a chair. So if boy one comes, he can select any of the five chairs. Boy two comes, any of the remaining four chairs. Boy three comes and then any of the remaining three chairs. So five into four into three. If I multiply five into four into three, I get it to be 60, right? Yeah, 60. And then I have 24. Since I need to place the boys and the girls, I'll multiply these two. So I'll multiply 24 into 60 and that I'll get as 1440. Okay. Now, so I believe the girls thing is pretty clear. If you have any doubt in these particular things, how it's not feeling so much, so how should I do it? Okay. You can have a separate idea about this also. So what do I mean by that? Okay. I will get, I'll tell you about that particular idea as also that I need not to use it. I can do it in a different way as well. There are five space. So can I say out of these five space, three spaces will be occupied by the boys, right? Because if there are five spaces uh, uh, now there, because I say, uh, I make uh, those uh, four girls sat on in any order, there are five spaces which are created. So obviously I can now understand that three of those spaces will be occupied by the boys. So which three places? The number of these three places are 5C3. So there are 5C3 places. Now, once I selected those places, I need to arrange the boys as well, right? So that I can do it in this way. So what I'm doing, I'm selecting three places. Okay, this is one place, this is one place, this is one place. That selection can be done in 5C3 ways. And then I say, okay, first boy can go in any of these three places. Second boy can go remaining two places and the third boy can go the remaining places. Now understand this one and this calculation, there is no difference because some of you have answered it as 5P3 for boys. 5P3 and this one things is same. You remember I, I made a mistake in the formula when I started writing P and C, I kind of reversed it. So this is basically to show you that whether you use 5P3 or you use a filling space method or you use this, you can lead to the same answer as long as you are sure about your concept. We generally prefer filling space method wherever we can do it. So this is kind of an extension of filling space method because that's much more easier for me to calculate five into four into three. Okay. So what if the girls is sitting in the first place? Okay. Okay. So there is a variation uh, asked by Alak. Okay, fine. So I'll just give you a variation. So this is just, I'm doing a variation so that you guys don't get confused about it. Okay. So I'm talk. Uh, so you were talking about a variation where they say it left of the queue, but I'm just changing the question. Left of the queue must be occupied by a girl. If that is the scenario, then obviously this is not a place where I can make the boy say. So the places I have now, these four. So what I'll do four factorial for the boys for first guy, first, um, boy so four factorial for the girls and first boy there are four ways then three ways then two ways so my answer will change in this way so if they tell you that this is a particular place cannot be occupied left most or right most you just your number of cases just change your approach remains same. see there is no change in the approach there will be some tweak in the question obviously they will do those tweaks i mean you cannot expect that the question will come exactly this way so once there is a tweak you take care of that constraint so if there is a quick, the first place cannot be occupied. So I block the first place, right? So can you guys confirm if I can move to that uh, on our next question? I'll solve another question which will be related to uh, um, numbers. So that is I'm going to do. If I don't see any much response within next ten seconds, I'm going to move to the next question. Okay, so the answer is this. 
answer is this because you saw that we got the answer in this way that there was girls can be seated in three four factorial ways which is 24 and boys can be seated in five different places but since we have three boys first boy can sit in five then four then three okay so i get 24 into if i multiply it with 60 i get 1440 this will be my answer okay so i'm moving to the next question then okay so this is basically the kind of the last question we are going to do today okay um try it out let me know your answer um And then I'll start the explanation once you confirm your answer. Okay. Take a couple of minutes or two and a half minutes. That's fine.
Yeah. Oh, sorry. My bad. I'll give 30 more seconds. Yeah. My bad. It was, I was, um, I was muted. Yeah. That's fine. I did not explain anything. So I just said, I'll give 30 seconds. I think I should be uh, audible now. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start the explanation in 10 more seconds. I have seen five, six answers. Okay, I'll explain it. I'll explain it. Sorry, I can't really read your name. Uh, I believe it could be Mandarin or something. Uh, I can't really read it. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll explain the question. The question says how many how many integers exist between one and this for which the sum of the digit is exactly two can't find the pattern fine okay so that's that's fine so i'll i'll tell you what happens in this kind of question how should i go about this kind of question okay so just allow me a second okay now suppose i get a question like this okay now, first thing is that how do I know what to do in this kind of question? Now, always remember in a question when they have something like digits or something, which may come across um, very um, difficult one, but most of the time not, if you can understand what they are trying to say. Okay. So just see here, they said the number exists between one and this. So that's a huge number, right? That's a huge number. Okay. So if there is a huge number I'm talking about, by the way, this is some of the digit is exactly two. So there are like a lot of digit can be there. So let me just give you some example. If I'm talking about a single digit number, okay, just one digit, it has to be two, right? If I'm talking about a single digit number, but if I'm talking about a double digit number, then it can be one, one, it can be two, one, it can be one, two, sorry, my bad, two, zero, this two, right? I, it, it will not be 0, 02 because 0, 02 is no longer a uh, two digit number, right? Okay. So I'm talking about this number. I need to count this and this. And then if I talk about three digit number, then it can be something like this. Okay. Or it can be something like this. Or it can be something like this. Right? Okay. Now, how do I make sure that I count all of these cases? Because is it something feasible for me to count the entire thing? Because you understand 10 to the power 21 will have one followed by 21 zeros. So there will be a total of 22 digits. Now, obviously, how do I do all of this? That's not possible, right? That's not possible. Okay. Yes, correct. That, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's something we cannot do. Okay. Now understand they said one and between these two. Now always remember the word between means you cannot consider those two uh, terms if they mention between, but most of the time they tell you between these two exclusive. Okay. I did not give it in a way. Most of the time they will GMAT will specify, but if there is a statement given to you as between exactly like this, because we have seen a question long back where the, it was uh, generally given in this way between this and this always take that they are not counted those two numbers are not counted but here it will not matter because 10 to the power 21 you understand some of the digit is one because it is one and then 20 followed by 21 zeros so it is going to be one i will not consider that in any which way okay so it means how should i go about it okay here there is an important thing that you should understand i can write all the numbers understand i can write all the numbers from 1 to 10 to the power 21 minus 1, which is basically a number. Understand this number. I hope you will get my point. This number is basically nothing but 99999 written 21 times. Although it is not very significant, but just to give you an idea of what is the, what is the meaning of this. Okay. 10 to the power 21 minus 1 is basically your 999 written 21 times okay so can i say my digit can have 21 different places right i can have 21 different places okay now just think about it okay i'm i cannot write all the 21 places so i'm just taking some of for granted suppose i write something like this 
just this so can i say it will have one two three four five six seven eight digits so this is basically a number this i'm talking about this particular number now this particular number will definitely have the sum as two right so if i can place two ones at any of these 21 places it is done my summation is going to be two I'll explain this part again. Okay, so I'm just moving to uh, next page. What I'm saying, suppose I write all the 21 places here. Say all the 21 places. Suppose I put one here and I put one here. And remaining all the places I fill with zero. Remaining all the places I fill with zero. Can I say that will definitely give me a number which will have some of the digit as one and one. And this is understand, this is a number definitely less than this number so i can definitely take it because i'm taking 21 digits okay i'm taking 21 digits and if any of them are zero that is fine it's okay with me so i'm talking about something like i can take a number which will look like this zero 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 written say 18 times understand what i'm trying to say here it may become little complex to understand or maybe so i'm talking about 18 zero then 101 that is basically the number i'm looking at 101 right so this is a valid number i can take it okay in fact i can take something like say seven zeros so seven zeros seven digits gone then one and then one so that is nine digits gone and then i will have 20, 21 means another 12 zeros i can put it in this way right okay so what essentially is here i'm trying to say all the numbers you can form either can have only one two or it can have two ones does this make sense there is no other way you can get the summation as two either you get one two or you get two ones does that make sense this part if this makes sense then solution will become much more easier so i'll wait for 10 seconds to um, let you okay so now since i understand this particular part can i say if I just put two ones to any of these 21 places, 21 C2 ways, I can select any two places. So what I'm essentially doing out of these 21 digits, out of these 21 digits, I'm just asking you, you select two digits, two places where you will place these one. Suppose those places are the first two places. So if they are the first two places or the leftmost places, my number is going to look like this, followed by all zeros. If you say, no, I'll not select them. I'll select only the rightmost number digit. So basically I'm talking about my number is 11. All the other digits are zero. And you see both of them are valid number because they are lying in my range. And this is a very important way to solve this kind of question. If they say some of the digit is given, this is the best way to solve it. You find out how many digits, how many places are there. So here I have 21 places. I can make any place zero. I have full liberty to that. So I can do that. And then I put which are those two places where I'm putting the one. So once I select them, that is 20 C, uh, 21 C two ways. Now, similarly, this is done for this one, one scenario. What about two scenario? Two means all you are doing, you are basically having one, two and remaining all zeros. So if you have one, two, what essentially you are doing, you are basically finding out which is that place where I have that too. So that place you can select it 20 C one ways. So this is basically to give you the numbers, all the numbers, which looks like two or 20 or like this, like this, all these numbers I'm talking about. Okay. All these numbers. So if you see it, this is one digit number. You will get the 20 first number will be two and then followed by 20 zeros. So you can even calculate it for that matter. If you understand what I'm saying, I'm like, this is first number. This is second number. This is third number. This is fourth number. 21st number will have 20 zeros. And that is perfectly all right. For one, I cannot do that manual calculation. For one, I'll have to rely on the method we know about uh, combination. So I just select two places. So if I calculate, it will be 21 into 20 divided by two. You can use the formula. This is easy, a small, shorter method. This is also we have used in our course extensively just to uh, give you, um, don't use the formula. If it is NC2, that's the easy way to you do it. So if it is NC2, this is not something very big. You just directly write it like this. That will give you the answer. Because many a times we use the term as NC2, NC2. 
Okay. So if I do it, I'll get 10 here, 210. So 210 numbers will have where you will see two ones and 21 numbers will be there where you will see all of them too. So it's 2022 0 and so on. Okay. So if I add them, I'll get to this. So I think once while I was answering, many of you actually changed your answer. So it's good that you have got how these kind of questions are solved. Okay, so this is from me in terms of question. I will just share a few more um, comments. I just have a few more comments. I'll talk to you about those things. You can tell me if you want to have any feedback, give me any feedback or anything you uh, want to add in some of the other sessions we have or something like that. We also conduct our sessions in our way. So if you want any specific type of questions or anything, you can definitely reach us, reach to us and let us know that which kind of questions. Okay, so I believe some of you said most of the type I try actually cover and uh, because these are the pain points we see one type I haven't done that is the mixed double type of question which is a very specific question but we have covered a similar question I mean a lower level question I would be honest with you about that okay so maybe in some of the other uh, seminar webinar we are going to cover that particular question yeah so. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about it. I'll share a couple of uh, links with you. Okay, so in case you want to do that. Okay. Mm. So just let me know if you have any doubt. So this is one link I am I have shared to you right now. That is basically a link to our free trial. Free trial. So obviously you can go through before committing any say anything. You can always go through the free trial and have a call on that. Okay. So the link is this. Okay. So you can go through. You can register free. It is obviously. So you can go through it. You can have couple of sessions and couple of not sessions. All right. You can go through couple of modules and see it. Okay, and then if you have any queries where you believe we can help you out, so in those things you can schedule a call with us. Okay, so this is the currently link, so you can just have it with you. So uh, you click on that, you schedule a session. We'll definitely be very happy to help you. Okay, so let me know if there is anything you want to tell me, or else I'm going to end this session. And uh, like I told you, um, if you like this session, obviously we'll expect that you will definitely like it and share it. Um, that's that's the expectation, obviously, from your end. And if obviously, honest feedback will definitely appreciate. For honest feedback, you can always write to this, or you can uh, write to our official ID, that is um, support at the rate gmatwins.com. So you can definitely do that as well. So I'll just drop that one here. Uh, just, just let me give, uh, just give me a second. So I just, okay. So this is the email ID is there. So you can definitely, you can definitely reach to us if you have any specific thing about anything. Like okay. All right then. Uh, so I am ending the session. Uh, if I do not hear anything from you. So in 10 seconds, I'm going to end the session. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks. I hope that it, it helps you in quant questions. I mean, permutation combination. For permutation combination, I would say just to end it, keep it simple. Don't try to like some of you said, what if I subtract? Don't try to com complicate things because once, whenever we try to complicate things, we try we tend to do double counting and things become so difficult that it's very difficult to understand comprehend also. Okay. So stick to the basic, make, try to find out the easiest way to solve those questions. That will always be helpful. Okay. Basically trying to keep it simple. Okay. And like I told you, we try to cover, this is our thing. So we try to cover double counting. You need to know when you can do double counting. Definitely think about those double counting type questions and be very sure. Okay. 
then obviously if why your approach is not wrong i mean a particular approach approach is not i mean approach is wrong basically deals with mostly about double counting right and those scenarios where should i use combination where should i use permutation where should i use filling space method where should i use combination selection and then arrangement those kind of things okay all right all the best guys so i am ending this session hope you uh, liked it take care bye maybe we will see you in some other sessions bye